a number of items on the agenda tonight, Jessica. I want to start with the presentation. I understand the executive director of the Cape Cod Commission will be attending the meeting this evening. Yes, uh, Paul Nidzwicki uh, will be there. Now, um, as much as we'd like to hear him speak uh, uh, primarily on the 208 area-wide uh, water quality management plan, which has uh, been finalized um, and uh, is up um, been presented and um, um, submitted. Um, the focus on uh, Mr. Nizwicki's uh, presentation will be on the Route 132 corridor study that was done by the Cape Cod Commission. Oh, interesting. This included, um, and that's a that's a regional corridor, as you know, a very con uh, um, important area uh, economically for uh, the town of Barnstable, but uh, for the whole region. But it also encompasses the Versus Way, Route 28 area so um there's going to be some some discussion from um him regarding that study as well but uh he assured me that uh, uh he would also mention um and update the council Indeed. and the public on uh, on uh, the water quality plan as well so. certainly well that route 132 corridor certainly an, an important uh, you know the important transportation facet of our town lots of lots of stuff to go on in there so i'm interested to see uh, what came out of that study so that's the only presentation uh, before the council tonight that's right that's right and then uh, there's one item under old business and on the heels of that um and that's an amendment of the zoning map uh, to uh, extend the highway business district along Route 132 to Attucks Lane, and, uh, and adjust a business district to follow property lines. And and uh, right now, uh, some of the businesses there are are working under use variances, um, which are uh, granted um, uh, by uh, the zoning. And what what this does is, um, and and this has already been vetted through the planning board. Um, this will um, um, bring into alignment some of the uh, areas here uh, for the the business areas, so they don't have to work under a variance, but uh, they have um, um, they'll have a rezoned um, some of these parcels, so it'd be a little more consistent with property lines and roadway lines. Sure. So it's a kind of a mishmash along 132 there, and um, there's some some uh, residential lots interdispersed with uh, um, business lots. So this is going to uh, try to help align all those. For for sure. And then moving on to new business, uh, Jessica, it looks like a number of uh, grant and gift acceptances uh, for the council to listen to uh, tonight. Yeah, uh, uh, the first one is uh, for um, seventy-two thousand seven hundred eleven from Mass Department of Mental Health, and and this is uh, um, to assist in the the training um, for our our, our um, community impact unit. Um, and we we received one recently from the LaRusso Foundation, um, and this is on the heels of that from the Department of Mental Health, and this will be used to train um, the the uh, unit um, on mental health issues. So, um, and it also um, it will train uh, not just the uh, impact unit, the four officers, but uh, 25 officers as well, and uh, and then pay for uh, the police officers to attend a, a crisis intervention team training. This is all uh, to to try to divert uh, um, people from jail, um, and uh, um, and because a lot of these issues, uh, violence and uh, crime, stem from um, uh, mental. Uh, health issues as well as substance abuse issues. So this will help the uh, police identify those. And Great. And then following on, on the kind of coattails of lo looking at the substance abuse issue, of course, that's the focus of the Youth Summit that's taking place uh, at the Highness Youth and Community Center this week. And the next item is an acceptance of a grant that will help fund that summit. That's right. That's happening tonight and tomorrow. Tonight is for the uh, public, and um, this is to fund a, a drama troupe um, called the Improbable Players, as well as prevention speaker Brendan Conlon. Um, this uh, was um, donated from the Cape Cod Healthcare Foundation um, and the Cape and Islands District Attorney's Office. So this is the, the seventh grade youth summit. I'm very proud of um, our youth commission and putting this together. And uh, and also um, um, kudos to uh, Councillor Jen Cullum for uh, the, she's the liaison to youth commission for guiding them through through this. Uh, I'm sure uh, it'll be a successful uh, summit.
Absolutely. And it looks like the next of several items, Jessica, are, are, are grants and, and funding for uh, projects at the airport. That's right. Um, this is over uh, $4.6 million in grant assurances. And uh, grant assurances are, are when um, uh, airport owners, uh, the um, uh, or uh, planning agencies or like the town, when we accept FAA or uh, administrative assistance, then we have to agree to certain assurances or obligations, and that's what these are here. And, and you know, the, the obligations require them to maintain and operate their facilities safely and efficiently and in accordance with specified uh, conditions. So that's what these assurances are all about. Indeed. Everything from you know the the uh, runway improvements to uh, to purchasing certain equipment and um, so um, these will all be uh, um, presented. Great, and then moving on to some some transfer orders. Uh, one for the DPW uh, for some work over at the highway division. Yeah, I guess and this is a sum of twenty five thousand. This doesn't affect the uh, DPW's operating budget at all. This is what they're going to be doing is shifting some monies from uh, some sal salary savings and personnel costs. Um, apparently. Uh, um, during uh, the installation of an underground uh, electrical service to the salt shed, they uh, discovered a very strong order, uh, odor of uh, diesel fuel. And uh, so with further exploration, they determined that there was a, um, an abandoned underground storage tank, which was not leaking, but around there the soils were. So it has to be excavated and removed um, um, so that, uh, and, and disposed of. And that's what this money will be used for. Great. And just a, a few more items remain. Yeah, one is an acceptance of a gift of deed uh, or a access easement and conservation restriction. And this is in uh, Councillor Phil Wallace's Precinct 11. Um, when uh, the uh, uh, property owners were subdividing their, their parcel of land um, and some of it has some conservation issues, um, uh, there was um, a uh, order of conditions that was placed on the, the land um, to protect, uh, I guess there's a, a steep slope and, and some um, um, wetlands and um, vegetation and wildlife areas that need to be preserved. So um, the ho homeowners have uh, deeded these over to the town. Right. And and that's uh, about an acre of land, um, and there's going to be some access in, in, in that area too. Uh, but um, uh, the, there's already the uh, parish acres, um, or excuse me, uh, um, there's already open space, about 18 acres of open space uh, contiguous to this. So Wonderful. that'll be added to that. Wonderful. And the next uh, item is a transporter of about $88,000 uh, for repairs to private roads uh, over on Loomis Lane in Centerville. That's right. This uh, is the uh, successful program of temporary repairs to private roads um, where a majority of the, um, the homeowners um, want to have their, this private road repaired. And uh, this is no cost to the town, but it, it is spread um, through the uh, uh, betterments assessment um, to the abutters. Um, and uh, the town helps with the engineering and uh, um, bidding of the project. And um, they're, they're going to be using funds from other uh, private road uh, repair <laughs> programs that had leftover um, monies. And... Uh, and uh, our town engineer, Roger Parsons, works very closely with the homeowners on these projects. And uh, um, and the cost of this improvement on this particular road will be about $88,000. And that will be spread out uh, about uh, to 20 abutters. So Great. that's a very successful program. Absolutely. And then the final item, uh, this is one that our town manager, Tom Lynch, mentioned during his interview on Monday, is a gift from Highline that will help pay for the construction of a pump-out facility in Hyannis Harbor. That's right. Uh, it'll be right down on the dock there. And, and um, this is to... Uh, uh, um, so that, uh, that there can be no discharge of treated or untreated boat sewage, which is prohibited right now because we're in a no-discharge area. 